This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1689, The Art of Decision-Making, by Andrew James of EstablishingTheSelf.com. And I'm your narrator, Justin Mollick, reading you blogs every single day of the year to help you live a more meaningful life. I cover personal development or self-help, minimalism, productivity, and more. Our other four shows cover finance, health, relationships, and questions and answers with a life coach, so you can check those out. Just search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this to find all of our shows. But for now, let's get right to the post as we optimize your life. The Art of Decision-Making by Andrew James of EstablishingTheSelf.com If someone were to ask you, what is the most important factor in determining the outcome of your life? How would you respond? I would assume you would respond as almost anyone would respond. Your life, and often your perceived self-value, is defined by the decisions and choices you make. Although I do not necessarily disagree with this sentiment to an extent, I'd like to offer an additional and at times conflicting viewpoint. When we make decisions, it is most commonly based on one key factor. Is this a good or bad decision? And I do not mean good or bad in a morally objective context, but rather an emotional one. How does this decision make me feel and how will it affect my perceived future? We weigh out the pros and cons for each choice we are presented with almost to a fault, torturing ourselves with the possible butterfly effect that we may inadvertently set in motion. Additionally, we tend to lament over past decisions, regretting things we may have said or the roads we may have taken. Humans, and in turn society, have assigned a heavy emphasis to an individual's decision-making process. Within a historical context, it is seemingly obvious that this habitual way of thinking has been encouraged by our peers for over a millennia. Religious texts rely heavily on the importance of decision-making, as do the political systems of the past and present. So it is completely reasonable, or at the very least fathomable, that our immediate reaction when forced with making a decision is to resort to the process aforementioned. From an extremely young age, at least in the United States, Individuals are forced to make choices that they believe will determine their future and livelihood. What university, if any, will you attend? What career path will you choose? When will you start a family? Where will you live? Who are you voting into political office? Unfortunately, many individuals believe that their whole existence will solely revolve around choices like these. Furthermore, we are encouraged to believe so by the preconceived roles and ideals that their society has set as a foundation before us. The Alchemist, an allegorical parable of sorts, is one of my favorite books. The story is riddled with countless moral and philosophical musings, and although it is not the most challenging read by any means, it presents some of life's most important questions in an easily digestible way. At one point, Santiago, the story's protagonist, attempts to answer the same question proposed earlier. What Paulo Coelho, the book's author, writes is beautiful, quote, making a decision is only the beginning of things. When someone makes a decision, he's really diving into a strong current that will carry him to places he had never dreamed of when he first made the decision, end quote. This quote encapsulates the mindset I believe is necessary when making decisions in our current cultural climate. Imagine a life in which you attempt to not see the decisions and choices you make as good or bad, but rather for what they truly are, events that transpire, nothing more, nothing less. Remove the emotional weight that comes with a blessing or curse of choice and realize that we're all just rapidly floating downstream in Coelho's current. The current is not good or bad, it just simply is. How we adapt and react to its waves is what truly matters. So theoretically, how does one move forward from here? How does an individual after having a specific connotation embedded into their psyche act accordingly? Well, I believe there are only two prominent options. Number one, continue living as you and many others have for so long, do not change, do not adapt, and most of all, do not grow. Overemphasize the choices you make throughout your life, seemingly giving them immense power over your emotional and mental well-being. Allow your past decisions to dictate who you are, who you will be, and what you will achieve. Allow these past decisions to define you in every conceivable manner, essentially stunting any and all opportunity for future growth. Base future decisions solely off of arbitrary concepts such as failure and success and ignore the subtle gray areas of life where many idiosyncratic opportunities lie. Blockade yourself mentally, emotionally, and at times physically 
allowing yourself to be fully consumed by your linear mindset. Falsely assume that once a decision is made, it is set in stone, uncompromising and unchangeable. Continue to live life in fear of the unknown, rendering yourself useless when acclimating to the uncalculated and unfamiliar. Worst of all, live a life that whether you choose to admit it or not, you are unhappy with. Or number two, take a counterculture stance against the overwhelming pressure of decision-making. Recognize that your self-worth and overall value as an individual is not determined by the various choices you have made in your life. Realize that you have made and will make decisions that you are unhappy with. However, you know that attempting to avoid these altogether prohibits your ability to grow as an individual. Instead of basing decisions off of them being good or bad, you begin asking these questions. Does this align with the life I want to live? Will this bring me happiness? Make choices for yourself rather than those around you and in turn, maximize your personal happiness. Know that every future choice is capable of shifting course within an instant. Nothing is solidified unless you allow it to be. Welcome the unknown, knowing that regardless of if the perceived outcome is positive or negative, you will grow, learn, and adapt. Acknowledge that with this mindset, every choice you make, again, whether perceived as good or bad, is an opportunity to flourish in maturity. Consequentially, fear will be replaced by hopefulness. Your life will be full of meaning, emotional fulfillment, and an overabundance of opportunity. Accept that the decisions you have made in the past have affected your life as it is now, but those same decisions do not define you as a person. Obviously, choosing the latter is easier to present hypothetically than it is to implement practically. Every individual's life is full of nuances that I do not pretend to understand. It'd be extremely naive of me to do so. However, I fervently believe that these principles can be applied to any walk of life, regardless of race, gender, or social construct. When we can begin to recognize these principles and act on them, we can begin living a more meaningful and purpose-filled life. The decisions and choices we make do not define us. How we adapt, grow, and respond to them do. You just listened to the post titled The Art of Decision-Making by Andrew James of establishingtheself.com. Thank you, Andrew. One note he had at the end that I'll read for you real quick. I've taken into consideration the instances of extreme unfortunate socioeconomic status. I do not pretend to understand what individuals in these positions experience. I also acknowledge that there are many instances in which attempting to implement the principles mentioned in this essay proved to be more difficult than others. However, I would consider it more of an offensive disservice to exclude any individual from these ideals simply because of their background. That being said, I do not disregard the fact that it may be more challenging to do so. A note that I thought would be good to include, we all come from different backgrounds and it may be more difficult for some than others to implement these ideas. But thank you again to Andrew, that'll do it for today. Have a great day, great weekend if you're listening in real time, and I'll see you tomorrow for Minimalist Monday, where your optimal life awaits.